Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, I like to take science and put it towards all things plants. That's both indoors and outside. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about fall cropping in a cold climate. In particular, Canada, I'm in a zone three, which is one of the coolest zones here in Canada, and I'm still able to do it. So I encourage you to do the same. But first, I want you guys to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. I put a ton of work into these and I always forget to say that, but it does help enormously with with that gall darn algorithm that doesn't seem to like me very much. I'm in all honesty, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I have a day job, that's all I have to say. Now, one thing I will say when it comes to fall cropping is if you don't have any cold covers or low tunnels, then you want to take into consideration your first frost day. In my case, I'm taking into consideration the first frost date, but I'm also going to be using a small cold frame, which is essentially plastic with the air in the middle. And then I'm also going to be using a low tunnel, which is nine and a half feet by two to three and a half it's it's basically two and a half feet wide and that's what i'm going to be using to keep the heat up i don't have the intention of heating this whatsoever and instead i'm going to be using heat sinks in order to keep the crop warm enough not necessarily plants that need to grow in above zero temperatures so first thing i want you to do is actually google what your first frost day is for your city, not your zone. Your zone does not matter here, your city matters. So the concrete jungle will have a frost date that's a little later than that of people in the same zone, but outside of the city, for example. So Google first frost date for, this is gonna tell you how many days you have left in the year without cover at nighttime to grow your plant. So fun fact, mine is around September 15th. It can be September 10th all the way to September 17th, but it's around. Container gardener type, you actually may be able to even keep them in the greenhouse if you like, which is what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna do a separate video on that because those plants aren't necessarily going to stay outside all winter. They're kind of gonna transition indoors for an indoor garden type setup, but I digress. So next up, you want to consider getting a min-max thermometer. This is going to tell you how cold that specific microclimate you're growing in is getting every single night. So if you're doing one low tunnel, you'll need one gauge. If you're doing a low tunnel and a cold frame, I highly recommend you get two separate ones because again, those little microclimates will have different growing conditions. So that is something to keep in mind there. Now, what you want to do with this, I've done a video on this, I believe, but you just zero out the, the dial. So this one's from uh, Lee Valley Tools, which is a Canadian company. You can also get them off Amazon. I'll tag them down below, but you just zero it out as this black gauge, which you cannot needle, <laughs> uh, goes up or down. It bumps the needle and leaves these needles or they're dead needles in place. And it's going to tell us how cold our nights are getting and when we need to install that furnace. And by furnace, again, I re remember I'm doing a sink type setup. So once we figured that all out, we want to add two weeks to that last frost date. If we have cover, if we don't, we want to aim for exactly that frost date. Now I'm using covers and the heat sinks so I can aim for two weeks out. If you're using a physical electric heater, I mean, the world is your oyster. You could probably go to a month, a month and a half out in a lot of areas. In, in some cases, you may be able to literally go all winter and not even joking. But regardless, I'm aiming for two weeks out because I don't want to run electricity that much outdoors. And I will be growing indoors inside my grow tents, which I'm going to do several videos on that for you guys. So I'm going to focus in on that. So some really great options are Swiss char. This one will take a little bit of frost. So if our heat sinks don't quite make it through the entire night, this will work. Beets are another one. Carrots, any sort of root veg, radishes, all will do incredibly well, even if that dips below zero inside of the tent. Cilantro, fun fact, if you have cilantro always bolting on you and setting seed or coriander, as some people like to call it, this is the time to grow it. Seriously, cilantro it up. Spinach, I'm a spinach nut, and the sparrows took my spinach out this spring, so definitely doing spinach. In particular, I'm doing this um, giant winter, and I'll tag down below, except for this one, because I, I actually don't know where to get this brand, um, but this brand, I'm an affiliate of, so I'll leave links down below for those. And then Winter's Keepers Beats, they're big beats, A. B, they do 
pretty good with uh, cooler uh, climates. Now, lettuce isn't cold tolerant, meaning if it does freeze, it's gonna go kaputs. However, it's very quick to be edible. <laughs> so the first time you get the warning on your phone that it's gonna frost tonight, you literally just gotta pick it and eat it. It sucks, but regardless, it works. And then there's this type of lettuce. I'm actually gonna do a video on this. There's pelleted lettuce, and then actually quite a few seeds come pelleted. And then single, I'll maybe uh, do a, a separate video on that. And I mean, the list just goes on. I got more spinach, more lettuce, radishes, um, and arugula. Arugula was the other one that I had. And again, not tolerant to frost. However, it's one of those things where you get the alert, you go out that night, you harvest, and you have slottis or arugula for a uh, supper type thing. Okay, so we're just in front of my husband's shop now, and you can see there's like a bunch of junk all over the place. Anyways, the next thing you need is a heat sink. So this is old, very old deep fryer <laughs> oil that I do not throw out because it's a wonderful heat sink. So I actually will leave these inside of the uh, unit, the, the type of cold frame that I'm using. It'll heat up during the day and because it's so viscous, it has a very high retention for heat and therefore it will keep my little low tunnel warm for those two weeks that I need it to last for. The other option would be water, which I've used in the past slash used in the spring and the fall, depending on how cold it gets. And I save my milk jugs or any sort of a container and I will fill it with water from the boiler. So I, or from my uh, kettle, my electric kettle. So I'll fill it up with the boiling water, take that and then place it inside of that cold frame and it will stay warm for that entire night and then you pull it out and just literally repeat the process every single day because it doesn't heat up enough during the day, unfortunately. So you will have to warm it up and then obviously transition it in. Now, the other option you could go with is rocks or some sort of cement. And this is because they do track quite a bit of heat. So the darker in color, the better. And if you kind of strategically place them inside of your um, area, they'll heat up during the day and then heat throughout the night. And if you're particularly ambitious slash have the tongue tools for it, you could do charcoal logs or bricks, rocks heated inside of a fire pit, and then you would move those in. And that would be really extreme circumstances where you're getting that really, really cool night. And then that's when you would move those into place. So I'm going to keep you guys updated on exactly what it takes to get this whole ball rolling. And I will, you know, do fall garden tours. We'll see if this fails or what ends up happening. Generally speaking, I'm tired by the end of the year for gardening, so I don't do as well with it. I kind of let things go. However, in the name of YouTube, I promise you guys, I will try my bestest to uh, keep things rolling so I can actually analyze the results for you. So with that being said, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and let me know in the comments down below if you fall or winter crop and what city or zone you're located in and how you do it gonna help out an enormous amount of people like I said the comment section is more valuable or equally as valuable to what I have to say so I'll talk to you guys next time bye